Hey, everybody, welcome to tonight's Bible study. We are in the 15th chapter of the book of Romans, and we are just getting to almost the end. This is the last chapter of real substance in the book. Uh, as we um, discussed last time, this is sort of the culminations. Paul is uh, ramping up uh, to the, um, the, the, the end of his, his thought. And he's kind of tying everything together uh, about the Jews and the Gentiles and uh, how God came to give salvation to both of them. In the last chapter we talked about, uh, Paul was trying to get people not to judge each other based on disputable matters. Uh, one person worships God uh, with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and certain days of the week, um, and other people, the Gentiles, didn't. Uh, same thing with the dietary restrictions and things like that. And Paul was saying, listen, whatever you're doing, do to God. And whatever they're doing, they're going to be doing to God. So let's not judge each other. And then he goes a step further, and he says, if you're not going to judge each other, though, make sure that you are living for each other. So you may not find something wrong, but if a brother is offended by what you're doing, why offended? I want to make clear we understand that. If a brother is seeing what you're doing, and though he thinks it's wrong, he says, well, since they're going to do it, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and they go ahead and do it, then you're causing your brother to stumble. A lot of people misread that text about, you know, don't cause your brother to stumble as don't do anything that's going to make them upset. Jesus did lots of things that made people upset. It wasn't about that. It was about causing people to see your witness and go against their conscience. And so Paul is basically saying if, um, if a person has a problem with eating meat and they're struggling with it, I'm not going to eat meat in front of them. I'll never eat another piece of meat if it causes somebody else to stumble in their struggle. Um, and so now we get into sort of the um, culmination of that thought in the beginning of this chapter. So we're going to begin. Uh, Matt is going to start us off. Romans 15, and we're going to be reading all 32 verses. Go ahead, sis. All righty. Verse 1 through 6. Now we who are, who are strong have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength and not to please ourselves. Each one of us is to please his neighbor for his good to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself. On the contrary, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For whatever was written in the past was written for our instructions so that we may have hope through endurance and through the encouragement from the scriptures. Now may the God who gives endurance and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ with one mind and one voice. Amen. 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 Seven. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. So he says to receive one another then, just as Christ also received you to God's, to God's glory, for I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises made to the fathers. And um, thus the Gentiles glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, because of this, I will confess you among the Gentiles and I will sing praises to your name. And again, it says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the people praise him. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come. And the one who rises to rule all over the Gentiles, <clears throat> in him will the Gentiles hope. Amen. Amen. 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. You know these things so well. You can teach each, each other all about them. Even so, I have been bold enough to write about some of these points, knowing that all you need is this reminder. For by God's grace, I am a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you Gentiles. I bring you the good news so that I might present to you as an acceptable offering to God, 
made holy by the Holy Spirit. So I have reason to be enthusiastic about all Christ Jesus has done through me in my service to God. Yet I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me, bringing the Gentiles to God by my messages and by the way I work among them. Verse 19, through mighty signs and wonders by the power <clears throat> of God, so that from Jerusalem and around about unto uh, Elysium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so I have strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, Least I should build upon another man's foundation. But it, as it is written, to whom he has not spoken of, they shall see, and they have not heard, shall understand. For which, for which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you, but now having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire these may these many years to come unto you when 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 whensoever i take my journey into spain will come unto you for i trust to see you in my journey and to be brought on my way hither worth word by you if first I be somewhat filled with your companion, with your company. Uh, but now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Amen. Amen. 26. For Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. They were pleased to do it, and indeed they owe it to them. For if the Gentiles have shared in the Jews' spiritual blessings, they owe it to the Jews to share with them their material blessings. So after I have completed this task and have made sure that they have received this fruit, I will go to Spain and visit you on the way. I know that when I come to you, I will come in the full measure of the blessing of Christ. I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea and that my service in Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints there so that by God's will, I may come to you with joy and together with you be refreshed. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. It's Amen. so loving. <laughs> yeah. It's so loving. Beautiful. Let's uh, give you all a few moments to go over your section, figure out what you want to say about it, uh, how you want to present it to the people, and then um, we'll discuss. Right, looks like Mandy's ready. Uh, I think Auntie Herbie's ready. Auntie Jocelyn's ready. Auntie Sue, are you ready? Yes. And I'm Auntie you, Auntie Joycey. Yes. Thanks. Excellent. All right. Let's get to it. Mandy Lay, start us off. Yeah, I just want to say, if Auntie Jocelyn, it is so loving, this letter, <laughs> what Paul is saying. But then that's because he serves a God that loves. And um, I and he's just like illuminating and he's just um he's just showing us yeah. who Christ is. And and we can see that through his letters, you know, that he he's one that just follows Christ to the core. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. and you see it like um I think of when I think of this first verse, you know, now we who are strong have an obligation to bear the weakness of those without strength. And I think of the verse when um Jesus is saying, Come to me all who are weary, you know, take upon my yoke. And sometimes taking upon um Jesus's yoke comes through others um, when we are weak and it comes through others who are just sitting there with us during our weak moments. I feel like that's when I feel um, 
that heavy burden that's on me get lifted in the Mm -hmm. moments. And so that's like, we (laughs) need to make sure that when we see our fellow brothers and sisters um, in their weak moment and that we are strong, we go to them and, and help them and kind of supply our strength to them, give them our strength. And um, we are not to, um, it's not a like, oh, I'll just bear with it type of thing. <laughs> like, I'll just bear with this moment. I'll just bear with whatever it is. But it's like, bear up, supporting them. You know, we're bearing up instead of bearing down. Um, we're not looking out for me, myself, and I. We aren't in the business of looking out for numeral uno, however you say it. <laughs> but we are I we're in this business of building each other up. You know, we're in the business of building and and not tearing down and um I saw this like please his neighbors and I thought wow that for me is I I've been in moments when I was people pleasing and I was a people pleaser and this there is um a key word here that it's for his good that I had to look at because there is there is the the self edification people pleasing there is the um what people are you feel are expected of you so that's why you do it and and then i feel that sometimes it's um it leads to many people i know it's led to myself having anxiety having depression having being burnt out but when my mindset switched and I realized that I am not doing this for myself, I'm doing this all for God's glory mm-hmm. and to have his glory on display. I think that that ended up like, yeah, I will build you up when you are down. I am not going to tear you down. I will sit there when you are weak. And um, when I got my eyes off of myself and put it on others, then I think for me that ended up, that was a game changer for me, honestly. And, And I just look at Christ's example. You know, he put others first. He put us, First, he took the abuse, he took the punishment on the cross, and it was never for his glory, it was for his father's glory. It was for God's glory. And so um that's the encouragement of that, the encouragement of of knowing that God is on my side, God um, I can go to him for strength and that there are fellow brothers and sisters that he will send also my way to give me that strength. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it helps me endure those moments that I'm feeling low or those moments. I mean, I can give you story after story because this, you know, preparing for a woman's week of prayer, never done it. I mean, I've only done one sermon every, what, three months or so, four months. And this is, this is five. And God has just like shown up in amazing ways and has um, given me strength and encouragement through other women that he just like has set up in place and and so I he can do it for me. Uh, he can do it for anyone. Amen. Amen. That, that's what I got. Amen. Amen. Um, I wanted to read this song. 
scripture first before I started my part. And um, because, um, anyway, because it, it lines up to what I'm, I want to share. So, um, Ephesians 2 8, Pastor. For by grace you are by faith, nothing you can, you did, could ever earn this salvation. Only through Jesus. Mm -hmm. Only him. So, you know, I think about Christ of all the reproaches on himself mm -hmm. um, that were aimed by. <clears throat> because he didn't um, live to please himself. He was always here to show the Father, show us who the Father is, and um, to always seek unity in the body of Christ, yeah, accepting one another, and doing what we need to do to our brothers and sisters and helping, you know, yeah, with wisdom and knowledge, you know. And Jesus was sent here to fulfill God's promises and to prove God's faithfulness. And he came not just for the Jews at that time, you know, but for the Gentiles too. And now all of us are part of that. You know, we can all praise God and we can all, you know, um, share that love that we know about, about God, who God is, you know, to our church families, to our families, to our loved ones, you know, to people that we care about, the people that we pray upon, you know, so... Um, yeah, that's what I got in my part, Pastor. <clears throat> Amen. Very good. Very good, Auntie. Very good. Thank you. It's beautiful. Auntie Sue. Yes. So he's uh, also telling them that God is the source of all their hope and that they can only do these things that... God wants them to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he also encourages them by telling them that he has confidence in them, that they're doing a good job, and that he wants to tell them that it is only through God's grace that they can spread the good news to their fellow believers and to the Gentiles. So he's... Uh, encouraging them and telling them not to give up hope, but to just trust in God and that they're doing all of this for God's honor and glory. Mm -hmm. not and he also is telling them that, you know, he has been doing all this for Christ and not that he can only do it through Christ strength and through the Holy Spirit strength, not by his own strength. So he wants to remind them of that also. Amen. 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 Great job, Auntie Sue. Thank you. Um, right on point. Auntie Joss. No, Joyce. Joyce. Auntie Joyce is first. Yes. Okay. You know, as the, the scriptures, you know, during that time, there was no cars, mm -hmm. you know, that traveled, majority walked. Mm -hmm. you know, when I think about this, I can see Paul walking to different places. He really had no place to stay. Mm -hmm. If I'm not, whoever was there would put him up for a while. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he would stay, just linger maybe a little while, and then he would get up and go. But mm -hmm. even that, showed how how God's gracious love that he portrayed knowing mm -hmm. that's what he that he needs to do in order to travel and people saw that and I'm thinking I'm sitting here and I'm thinking oh I got a car get mm -hmm. in the car you know get in the car no walk feet you know from whatever mm -hmm. place you go I, I remember my family when they were younger okay walk feet okay mm -hmm. how else you know? uh, uh, but uh, I'm I'm thinking how God's love and graciousness was so overwhelming that He got up and He just did what He wanted, what He needed to do for God's glory and love. Just showing that was a it was a big tremendous um, effort that our Lord had provided and the angels to get Him to go 
and mm-hmm. and stay a little while, maybe nourish himself what others may nourish him or give him a place to stay or something to eat. And then he got up and went again. What a great, you know, what a, what a great, uh, just a, not a service, but to show others how much God loves us and how much God loved him that to, to go and travel, to preach the gospel for our Lord. What, mm-hmm. what a great thing. You know, I, I was looking at that. I said, oh, yeah, no car. And going from all, and then he said he was going to Spain, and then he was here and there. But it just gives me the strong feeling how much the angels and God was with him through all his entire travel. Not only what he was preaching when, or what he was giving, there's also other things that detail in order to travel, in order to, to present mm-hmm. good news to others. Um, and that just makes me think that how easy it is for me. And now, you know, I, I have to travel the way he does to different places. Um, and so that the Lord gives us the opportunity, give us the opportunity to to show his love and his kindness the same way that Paul was trying to preach to the loving people um, at that point in time. That's my take at this point in time with the love and glory that he had, that God shared with him and the, all the angels in order to do God's work. I love that, Auntie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Paul didn't even have a car. What's your excuse? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't even right, have internet. <laughs> exactly. Um, first, I want to say thank you so much for these Bible studies, Pastor, and my family. Because through these Bible studies, I've come to know um, Paul better and better. Mm-hmm. Who he is. What he represents. And I get to, I'm actually feeling his heart. And that's why when I'm reading this, it's such a loving, his letters are so loving. And I've come to see how Paul lives out his faith. He's living his faith. Amen. Here he is. He, he has a church that has so much division because it's combined of both the Jews and the Gentiles. But he's trying to be an example for them, how to be unified. And so now he feels that his job is done in Rome. Um, And you know what? Even though he was a prisoner when he was in Rome, it didn't stop him or it didn't discourage him from continuing his mission. It didn't discourage him him from continuing to live his faith. So he, he wanted to go to Spain. He also thought that in Spain, there were um, intellectual people there. And through these people, through these kinds of people with great minds, he thought that it would be a perfect atmosphere um, to advance Christianity. So he goes there and then, you know, that, that, that's what's in his heart. That's what he wants to do. And he tells the people, you know, pray for me. He actually has a prayer request. He says, he urges the believers to join in his struggle through prayer. And you know, when he said that, I can I can see us doing that. You know, as as parents, as um, kupunas, we often stand in the gap for our children. We mm. often stand in the gap for our mopunas. We often stand in the gap for our loved ones who may not have that close relationship with our heavenly father Mm -hmm. and paul understands that and he asks um to please stand with him help him and pray with him and for him during this struggle Mm. and prayer surely there definitely is power in prayer Yes. And so, um, thank you. Thank you for letting me share. Beautiful. Great, great job. You always all did such a wonderful job. I'm going to throw a couple things in there, then I'll open it up um, as they came to me. Um, for me, this is, uh, and I you know, really resonate with what a lot of you said. The first part of Romans, uh, you know, one through six, is one of the most impactful scriptures in my life in dealing with others. 
that um, I grew up, you know, a pastor's kid, you know, a lot of knowledge, um, which also brought me, I think, a lot of arrogance. And, you know, I would look at other people who I didn't think were following scriptures the way they should be followed and acting the way they should act, you know, and I'd be like, well, you know, what the scripture says, and I could argue my way through things. And so I thought I was strong. When I came to this and I was reading, it hit me, you know, we who are strong, um, and you almost put that in quotations, you know, you who think you're strong, you know, where do you really get your strength? You know, Paul knows that the true strength is from Jesus Christ. And so this is sort of a two pronged little thing to those of you who think you're strong. Well, then bear with the failings of the weak. You know, that's our job. And those of you who know where your strength comes from, well, you know that what Christ did was he also bared with the failings of the weak. The thing he came in, Christ didn't come in condemning or pointing fingers or uh, at at least the, the people who were struggling, the weak. He pointed fingers at the people who thought they were strong and said, do better. And um, this is one of those wonderful opportunities that helps us know how to we can deal with people in our lives and our churches. I've had more... Um, uh, spouses storm out of my office over this text than almost any others. Uh, because a lot of times they'll come to me and they'll say, you know, my spouse is not being uh, Christian enough. You know, they're not following what the Bible says. And, you know, they want me to come and condemn them and like, you know, bring the hammer down. And I said, well, brother, sister, you know, be, be patient with them. And they go, but, 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 but they're, they're, they're not, they're, they're doing this and they're doing this and they're doing this. And, you know, they're, they're not eating the way or drinking what they're supposed to be drinking. And ah, pastor, you just, you have to tell them. I said, listen, I open the Bible up to this text. It says, you feel that you know the scriptures and you are more spiritual than your spouse. They're like, oh, yes, pastor. I pray every day and da-da-da. So it's great. Okay. What does this say? We who are strong are bare with the failings of the weak. So mm -hmm. your spouse is weak right now. So maybe bear with them. And I found that weakness comes in every area, right? Mm -hmm. And any area where you mm -hmm. see somebody and you're like, they should be doing this better. You know, well, then you okay. are then assuming a posture of strength. Mm -hmm. And so Paul is saying, if you have that uh, place of strength, then what you need to do is be subservient and help serve them, help them to be better. And not by condemning them, but by being patient with them and um, helping to do things to bring them closer to Christ instead of drive them further away. And when you attack and, when mm -hmm. you and you, um, condemn, what you do is you drive people away. And so mm -hmm. Paul is calling on us, all Christians, and he was, I think, really kind of like needling the Jews a little bit, because the Jews are like, oh, you know, we have the, the, the sacrifices and the temple service and the seventh day, and Sabbath, and, you know, all these things. So, you know, we don't eat, you know, pork, and, you know, we're, you know, um, have the three angels message. Oh, and then the Jews, right? And, you know, we, we, we know all this stuff. We are better than everybody else. Paul's like, okay, great, great. You have your strength. That's good. So bear with the failings of the weak. You know, mm -hmm. they're not, they don't see it yet. So, so help them in love to see it. Um, you know, and then he goes on and he talks about God's purpose has always been to bring the Gentiles in, to bring the ones who are, you know, out there. Because the Jews felt very much like they were the remnant people of God. They were the only ones who were going to be able to get to heaven. And mm -hmm. I was like, no, God's purpose is always to bring everyone in, everyone who could. And it got me thinking, who are my Gentiles? Mm -hmm. You know, who are the people who I think, oh, these people, they don't get it. They don't really deserve a place in the kingdom. I can go out to all these other people and try and bring them in and you know, preach the gospel. But these people, they're not living the way that I think they should be living. They should be doing better. So I don't have to preach to them. Uh, who are my Gentiles? And, and, and it you know, really made me think and stop, you know, and, and, you know, kind of, you know, get honest with myself about who, you know, I'm really supposed to be going to. Um and then uh, he goes in and, um, you know, I love what he says. I want to preach the good news where no one else has preached it. And, you know, have I even preached the good news where it's been preached a hundred times, let alone going into places that people haven't heard. It used to be in our country, we could, almost everybody across the board had a, some type of religious understanding and knowledge, either from the media, you know, the po most popular movies in the, the land were, Bible movies, Ten Commandments, you know, the robe, these types of things. Uh, and then there are schools. It was taught, you know, the Bible, Christianity, biblical Christianity was the norm. It was the acceptable culture. Nowadays, it's not. And I'm surprised at how many people have no understanding of the Bible, no understanding of, of, of the good news. 
And, you know, we kind of keep waiting for them to come to us. And Paul is basically telling us that our job is to go where the good news hasn't been, where they don't know the good news yet, where it hasn't been preached. And if you look at people, you say, well, I don't know if I can go to them. They look really, you know, mean and nasty and um, not right. Well, it's because they don't have Jesus yet. And maybe, you know, be bear with their weaknesses and bear with their failings and show them Jesus. They might just change a little bit. They might come and to understand God. Anyway, uh, these are some of the things I got. Uh, Paul kind of wraps it up. Part of the letter was, uh, it was a, um, you know, to get everybody right, but also to kind of raise money for his trip to Spain mm -hmm. and um, to kind of do a fundraising for the Jews back in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so he's kind of, you know, this is what he kind of wraps up with. And finally, Anati, um, Jocelyn, I want to give you real credit. You really nailed this, um, you know, the, 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 the whole prayer. Um, and the way we struggle for each other is we pray for each other and things like that. And, um, you know, how do you join the struggle with the people in your lives? You know, what's the way? And, you know, Paul says, you can join the struggle for me by praying for me, by helping me out. And a lot of times we want to give advice or we want to have people, you know, hey, make sure you're, um, you know, doing X, Y, and Z. And sometimes all they need is for us to just let them know that I'm praying for you and actually pray for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then if they ask for help, go forth and, and help them out. So anyway, that's all I got. Anyone else? Go ahead, Auntie Joss. Pastor, sometimes when I thought that I was strong, you know what? I fooled myself because I wasn't strong. I was actually weak, you know, <laughs> really. And and um, I, I didn't know it. But I was really weak. I was fooling my own self many times. And Pastor, so this almost is parallel with the series that we're in now at church. Mm. Almost. Yes. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, a little uh, bit. About being mentally right. Yes. Uh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Andy, what made you realize that you, or what made you think that you were strong? Let me, let me ask you that. Um. I got God on my side. So just because I think I got God on my side and I'm on his team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm invincible. Well, Don't it sounds like me. you were making God <laughs> be on your side, right? Yeah, Instead yeah, yeah. Well, on God's I'm, side. I'm, in, I'm on God's yeah. side. I'm on his right. team. So right, right. I'm I'm all good, but right. uh, not right, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I want to make sure that we understand we are strong in Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want anybody that you know walk out here thinking like, oh, I'm, 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 I don't have the strength to do what God's called me to do. God's given all of us the strength to do what He's called us to do, and it's in the name of Jesus Christ, not in ourselves. Yes. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, when we start thinking that, oh, well, I've got, I'm better than someone else. I've got strength mm -hmm. that they don't have. Then you know we get ourselves in the trouble. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good job. Yes. Uh, who else? Well, that's when our eyes turn on to ourselves and not mm -hmm. on yes in that yeah. moment. Yeah. yeah. You hit that really well, sis. You we talked about that. So that's when we die to ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Now, the idea is, you know, and I think it was Auntie Sue, Auntie Joss, uh, Joyce, one of you guys hit this, that the whole purpose of everything is to point people to Jesus, to bring them to Jesus. And if what we're doing in our walk is not bringing them to Jesus, then what we really need to do is like take a step back and reassess our, our strategies, you know, how we're reaching out. You know, we had as Adventist Church, one of the great messages for everybody in as far as help goes when it comes to the health message. But instead of bringing it to people like a gift wrapped up in a bow and, you know, beautiful mm -hmm. present, and, hey, this is, this is some good news for you. We brought it to them like a club. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't do that, if you eat any piece of chocolate, you're going to hell. And mm -hmm. caffeine, oh, have mercy. And we just beat people, beat people, and beat people. And people shied away from us. And we started stopping, stop spreading it because it was spread in such a bad way. And the people who, you know, who didn't like the way it was spread were just embarrassed. And we just shut down. And the truth is, we have a beautiful message. And right now, mm -hmm. the, the medical communities, and I'm talking to a lot of psychologists right now, they're all getting in line with what we've, for as a church, almost over 100 years been you know preaching um and so yeah our, our strength sometimes makes us weak and when we don't give it the way that jesus would have given it um anyone else before we wrap up no 
Well, thank you guys very much for joining in today. Um, next week, we won't be meeting. We will be, um, but we are going to all be supporting Mandy Lay as she does the women's conference at the Seventh-day Adventist Church there on Poly Highway. Um, we invite anybody who's listening to this to join her. Uh, women, uh, they say there's no men allowed. Um, it's the She Woman Men's Haters Club or something like that. Um, no. <laughs> of course, I'm joking. But yes, um, well, women is a uh, time for you to come together and, and, and um, strengthen each other in Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. So uh, she has a wonderful series that she's going to be delivering to you. And I, uh, it's going to be a, a feast. So I hope you can all join her. Uh, with that said, Mandy, would you close us with prayer? Absolutely. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for um, this time when we can come together as fellow brothers and sisters and strengthen one another in your word. And um, we first thank you for your strength that you give us in our weak times. Mm -hmm. um, we pray for everyone that is listening. We pray for the families that are on here tonight and Amen. watch over each and every one of us. And Lord, I just want to pray over the um, women that you have in mind that need to come next week mm -hmm. to the women's conference. You know who they are. And so we ask that you remove anything that is going to keep them from coming that includes themselves we yeah. ask you um let us be the hands and the feet and let us take territory father god for your name for your glory in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. uh quick sis i have one thing for you before you go but um everybody else have a wonderful week We'll be praying for you. We'll see you on Sabbath. Um, I hope you've been enjoying the series. This yes. Sabbath, Jill Garcia will be talking after church mm -hmm. about trauma and mm -hmm. how we um, can navigate trauma and mm -hmm. how we can help others who have gone through huge trauma in their lives, help them navigate it, um, you know, coping mechanisms and so forth. And I think it'll be, it's important and good because I don't know about you, but all of us have gone through some sort of trauma. And some of us more than others. And it is uh, important to address it, uh, to recognize it, and to discuss it. So um, um, this is what we're going to be doing this week. Thank so you. come on out. Thank Enjoy you. Us. Thank right, you. Bye, guys. See you Bye. Guys